Hello everyone. So today uh, I'm going to show you how to calculate the snow load uh, following the National Building Code of Canada. And uh, as I showed in the last class, uh, I showed the equation of the snow load and uh, I'll solve a couple of problems to calculate the snow load. Uh, please note that we will need this snow load calculation for your project and also for the uh, assignment and midterm exam and other things. So please, uh, please uh, follow my calculation. So as I showed in the last class, I showed the snow load equation as shown in this slide. Can make a full screen. As you see, uh, this is the equation of the snow load uh, in the section 4.1.6.2 in the NVCC code in the NVCC National Building Code of Canada 2015, uh, clause number 4.1.6.2. And this is the equation snow load in terms of KPA. And there are uh, four different factors. The factors are uh, CB for basic snow load factor, CW is for the snow exposure factor, CS is for the uh, slope factor, and CA is the accumulation factor. And SS and SR, that are the two values given in the uh, NVCC code for a particular location. Uh, SS is the snow load in one in 50 years, and SR is the rain load in KPA, kilo Pascal, uh, also one in 50 years. So you need to take the SS value and SR value from the NBCC code for a particular location. And uh, we need to calculate the snow load using this parameter. And uh, what is the importance factor? Importance factors for the snow load are given in this chapter and in this table, for table 4.1.6.2a, importance factor for snow load. And for low low importance buildings, the snow load is 0.8, uh, for normal 0.1, for high 1.15, and for post register, the importance factor is 1.25. And for serviceability, as I showed in the pre uh, previous class, uh, for serviceability, all the factors are 0.9, importance factors are 0.9. Just to remind you, maybe I can sh go back one of the slides showing serviceability. I can just quickly show you. Remember this slide I drew uh, the serviceability factor. For example, in a timber house, if you jump, jump around a lot in the floor, so or if you do a dancing in the floor, then the floor vibrates a lot and it causes lots of sound and it also the floor vibrates so that's why uh, because of high noise and high vibration we need to ensure that the slabs are not vibrating too much and that's why reinforced concrete slab is better than a wooden slab in a house uh, and for the same reason uh, as i showed in a project that i worked in in past in the top floor of a 40 story building the uh, light and the fan and the chandelier, chandelier lights they're moving a lot and then it scares off everyone living in the top floor and that's why no one wanted to stay stay rent or own the top floor of the building and uh, although the structural design is 100 percent safe but people do not feel safe to that case in that case uh, that's why this because of serviceability factor is also important and uh, the first column in that importance factor that is the uh, for the safety calculation if i go back to the problem again uh, so this is the equation and uh, that's why the two tables second one is the serviceability calculation and uh, first one is the strength calculation and for the strength calculation we need to use the factored load and for the serviceability we need to consider the unfactored load. And uh, we talked about the SS and SR values. So I'm just showing in the next slide. So this is a snapshot of uh, from the NBCC National Building Code of Canada for different locations. As you see the left column, different locations are given. Toronto, Etobicoke, North York, Scarborough, Toronto, Downtown, City Hall. And the third and last, third and fourth last column, column from the right hand side 
is the snow load. One in one by fifty means one in hundred fifty years. It can happen once in a fifty year time. And for SS is the snow load and SR is the rain load. And we need both SS and SR for the calculation of the snow load. And this is the equation we need to use. And this is the importance load table. And those are the four parameters CB, CS, CW, CS, and CA. Basic roof load, snow load factor, wind exposure factor, uh, slope factor, and accumulation factor. Now I'm going to solve a problem. Please uh, pay attention to my problem. So this is the problem statement. Calculate a snow load. Calculate the snow load for a television station building located in North York in Toronto following the NBCC 2015 code. And what is given? Given is characteristic length of the roof of the building is 40 meter and slope of the roof is 10 degree with the ground level or the horizontal level. So two things are given, characteristic length. So what is characteristic length? So you can just go back to the NBCC code to calculate the diff, uh, diff, find out the definition of the characteristic length. And we'll also see, learn more about characteristic length in the problem two. But for problem one, which is this one, uh, we are assuming that the, the given parameter is characteristic length of the roof is 40 meter. And the slope is 10 degree angle from the horizontal level or from the ground level, it's 10 degree angle. And we need to calculate the snow load. It's a type of the building is a television station building and the location is North York in Toronto. So for North York in Toronto, we can go to the stable NVCC code, snow load, one in 50 years, and it is in KPA, SS, and SR. So for North York, we can go to these values. The value is SS is 1.2 KPA, and 0.4 KPA is the SR value. So we'll solve the problem now. So I'm going to the, I'm trying to solve it. So first, what is the equation? The equation is, S equals to importance factor IS multiply SS multiply bracket CB, CW, CS, and CA plus S rain. So now what is given? The given parameters are uh, it's a television building, television station building. So now we can go to NVCC code, table number, table number uh, 4.1, 4.1.2.1. If you go there, you can see that the television station building is considered as a post digester building. Post digester type of building. Now we can go to NBCC code and go to table. 4.1.6.2. What is table 4.1.6.2? We just discussed this. This is the table, table 4.1.6.2. Table 4.1.6.2 for post digester. We're calculating for the strength, not for the serviceability. So you should take this value. So we're going to table 4.1.6.2, importance factor. We can found out that it's a television building is a post digester building and the parameter is 1.25. So therefore, you can find out that IS equals to 1.25. So what is the next step? The next step is, uh, what else is given? The given is roof characteristic length. Roof characteristic length. LC is given as 40 meter, I think. We can go to the problem again. Yeah, it's given is 40 meter. 
and the slope is 10 degree. So getting it. Uh, the characteristic length is 40 meter. 40 meter. And this 40 meter is less than 70 meter and also less than 200 meters. So since it is LC characteristic length given is 40 meter, which is less than both 70 meter and 200 meter. So we can see that we can say that CB value, the first parameter is 0.8. So we'll need this in this equation. And we also need this in this equation. Other thing we found out, or we, uh, we can also go to the NBCC code. And for Ito B. Cook, the building is located, no, uh, the building is located in North York. It's in North York. And if you go to the table, the parameters are for North York is 1.2 SS and 0.4 SR. So we can go to the solution. So it's not Ito B. Cook, it's North York. For North York location from NBCC code SS equals to 1.2 kPa and SR equals to 0.4 kPa. So what else we need? We got SS, we got SR, we got CB, we got IS. So we will still need three parameters, CS, CW, CS, and CA. So what else we know? We also know the angle. Angle is 10 degree. 10 degree. And the 10 degree is less than 15 degree. So since it is less than 15 degree, we can say that the other parameter, slope parameter, which is CS, CS equals to 1. Since no other information is given, we can assume the, uh, then we know CS. Since no other parameter is given, we can just assume that the uh, CW, CW value and CA value are the regular values. So since nothing is given, we can assume that it's regular value. So we can assume that C, We can assume that CW, there's no space here. So we found this one. So we can assume that CW value is one and CA value is also one. If there is nothing given, we can assume that these two values, both of them are one. So now we can calculate the uh, actual snow value. So maybe we can do delete some of the stuff. Stuffs. Uh, Interruption eraser, and then maybe we can delete this. And we can delete this. Okay, now I think we can calculate. So now we can back to pointer pen. So we mistakenly deleted the bracket. The bracket here. So then the values are 1.25 importance factor. Multiply SS value is SS value. Where is SS value? Yeah, SS and SR. 1.2 kPa and SR 0.4 kPa. So 1.2, 1.2, multiply, you can put the factors after, plus 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And now the factors, factor CB is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, CW is 0 0.1, and then CA is also 1. And CS is, we calculated 10 degree less than 15 degrees, so it's also one. So you can do the math. So if we do all of this multiplication, so you get the value is 1 point, you get the value is 1.7 kPa. 
on the in it is kpa kilopascal s equals to 1.7 kpa so if we change the color it's a green color so this is the final answer snow load value is 1.7 kpa so this is the final answer so our problem statement we solve the problem snow value is 1.7 kpa and after this vi uh, video i'll also solve the second problem how to calculate a snow problem with a little bit different parameters so we are uh, ending this particular video here uh, please see the second video